So before I hand over the screen to Dr. Shahu, I'd like to give the brief introduction about Dr. Shahu. Dr. Shahu Natunaran Shahu is an assistant professor in the Department of Electronic Science, Virapur University, since 2018. He obtained his intake and PhD from the Shoa University and Berampur University, respectively, in 2011 and 2016. He secured first class first position in the MSc. He qualified national level UGC NET, lecture seat. He is recipient of the INSPIRE Fellowship by DST Government of India uh, from 2011 to 2016 and National Postdoctoral Fellowship by SCRB from 2016 to 2018. He has published more than 17 peer review journal papers and international report and 17 full international conference proceedings and attend several in uh, short term training courses and presented a lot of conference papers in the several prestigious conferences in India and other. His research area include exploring and simulating new low dimensional quantum wall structure and to analyze the transport and optical properties, which will helpful for the further nano electronic devices. With this short biography, I'd like to request Dr. Shahu to share his valuable uh, knowledge and research findings to our uh, participants. Dr. Shahu, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, your kind words. So, uh, my voice is audible. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Which one? So, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Miss uh, and uh, Dr. Devasis Panda, sir. So, for giving an, me an opportunity to share our research work with the participants. So, good afternoon to all. So, the specific uh, uh, that topic for this talk is low dimensional semiconductor structures and devices. So for this, uh, here I choose uh, the first two lecture which basics for low dimensional uh, structures, uh, basics of some semiconductor uh, devices. Then in the third lecture, that means in, on uh, 18th uh, June, I will share uh, the research activity, which is a uh, going on by our uh, group in Barampur University. So, uh, okay, so let's proceed. As this uh, program is on recent trends in emerging devices and nanotechnology. So let me just a uh, pass on nanotechnology. Uh, as all of you know, there is a, a lot of work is on going on nanotechnology. So specifically uh, day by day, everything is scaled down like our MOS technology, which is uh, rapidly scaled down. So when the dimensions of uh, uh, the structure, that means the device, uh, dimensions of this uh, structure is between 10 to the power minus seven meter to around 1000 angstrom, then we say it is in nanotechnology or nanoscale region. So for example, you can see a CMD, carbon nanotube, which is made up of the graphene having diameter to nanometer. So, what is nanotechnology first? So this, uh, this nanotechnology, this is nothing but man-made structures. That means the charge carriers, which behave differently than that of a bulk semiconductor, and it, it will exhibit new physical phenomena leading to new technology known as nanotechnology. That means in nanotechnology, we will play with the atoms. We can arrange atoms depending upon our application, depending upon our device demand. So that is the beauty of nanotechnology. Uh, so basically the nanotechnology or nanoelectronics, which is uh, the design and construction of beautiful technological devices whose size is a few billions of a meter, that is in the order of 10 to the power minus 10, uh, that, uh, then to minus nine meter. Uh, so this device that will be built of small assemblage of atoms linked together by bonds to form macromolecules and nanostructures. That means we can uh, design atom by atom in nanotechnology. So the devices that uh, compress, uh, encompasses the nanoscale circuits and devices, including the ultrascale phase, RTD, spin devices, super lattice arrays, quantum coherent uh, devices, molecular electronic devices, 
and carbon nanotubes. So as uh, recently you uh, you have uh, a mean news that uh, now PSMC it has fabricated the three nanometer node length uh, head. So that means just imagine the node length is only three nanometer. So that's why we are now in the nano. Uh, that means ultra scale heads. So all belongs to this nano electronics. So what are the phenomena that we come across in the nano scale? When we come into nano scale, you see, what are the phenomena that uh, we face? The important one is the quantum confinement. Quantum confinement means if any of the dimensions uh, of the device is uh, uh, equivalent to that of B or Q wavelength, then we say there will be quantum confinement. So that small dimensions lead to quantum confinement and associated quantization of uh, motion leading to discrete energy level. As like all of you know, in bulk, there are continuous energy levels, but when it became quant confinement, that energy level will split. That means it will be discrete age. That leads to very interesting phenomena. Similarly, the quantum interference, where the electron that can behave like a, a wave and it will uh, give the like uh, optics property that leading to reflection and other non-classical wave like behavior. This one is quantum interference at the nanoscale region. Similarly, there will be phase coherent transport where instead of diffusive transport, you will get ballistic uh, transport. Ballistic means no scattering phenomena will be there. So the mobility or conductivity will be very high. Similarly, the single electron effect, spin dependent transport. Nowadays, it is very uh, rapidly uh, rising, the spin tonics. So, uh, this uh, phenomenon will appear when we came at the. So, this is the basic, uh, basic some uh, just a uh, uh, introductory idea about nanotechnology. So, my uh, presentation in uh, today and the coming two sessions. Today we will discuss uh, regarding basics of semiconductors and their electric devices. Session two is on heterostructures only and their property. Basically, I will discuss the confinement properties. And third uh, session, we will discuss about the research activity. Uh, that means uh, the electron transport property in different uh, low dimensional heterostructures, low dimensional structures. And basically, I will focus on that day on quantum oil structures. So uh, this is uh, today's uh, layout. We'll some basic features. Then, uh, as like the uh, classroom uh, uh, methodology. So some unknown facts. So why this uh, semiconductor devices? They are lot of influence in 21st century. As all of you know, in all electronic uh, gadgets, including computers, laptop, or anything that uh, the main basic building is the IC, which is made up with semiconductor. Similarly, high frequency components like mobile satellite communication, we need these semiconductor devices, light emitting diodes for display and lightning, lasers, the laser for fiber optic communications. Nowadays, different sensors for health diagnostics as well as in industry. So many of these vital parts of everyday life, they rely on semiconductor structures of reduced dimensionality. That means 2D, 1D, 0D like this. So the understanding of the basic physics that underlying such structures, low dimensional structures, how they are made and their key properties that forms the basis of today's session. So we first begin with a summary of the basic properties of semiconductors required, then we'll go for some devices. So let's start with the condensed matters. As all of you know, the semiconductor, we classify the semiconductor depending upon its resistivity, which lies between metal and insulator. So specifically, the semiconductor, there are the fourth elemental semiconductor like silicon and germanium. However, by taking third, fifth, 
like the gas or second tip like cadmium sulfide etc there are a lot of compound semiconductor material are there so uh, in a semiconductor specifically the charge carriers both electron as well as the holes so here the hole is the new things that all of you know either you increase temperature or you add impurity then your the conductivity decreases in case of metal whereas in case of semiconductor either you increase temperature or you add impurity you can increase the conductivity or indirectly the resistivity decreases that's why we say semiconductor possesses the negative resistance of conduct, uh, negative resistance of uh, temperature so and in all of our devices motto is to analyze the id characteristics so uh, uh, in your semiconductor sorry in your conductor that characteristics which follows the linear characteristics which follows the ohms law where however here it will be non linear characteristics so uh it starts from bonds and bands let's uh, see this is the bond picture this is metallic bond in case of metal and for semiconductor so as all of you know if we take a crystal if we take a crystal there are uh, 10 to the power 20 number of uh, in these atoms are come close to each other then there will be overlapping of the energy levels and that leads to splitting of the energy levels specifically when uh, the if we take silicon the 3s2 and 3p2 these energy overlappings that will splits so it will give rise to the valence band and conduction band so if we uh, model this by using kp model then we can uh, obtain the energy levels so this gap is the band gap these bands like valence band or conduction band they are uh, composed of very close in space orbitals like this and the gap is very 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 less gap that is order of 10 to the power minus 22 that means is energy levels they are very closely compact so so uh, if we uh, uh, keep the temperature 0 kelvin at 0 kelvin so here this valence band which is completely packed with the electrons that means the valence band is completely filled as it is completely filled so the conductivity is zero however in the conduction band there are energy state there are uh, density of states that means the energy state is available however there are no electrons at e equal to 0 k so there are different methodology by using we can take electron from this valence band to conduction band for example if we apply a photon light with energy greater than the band gap energy then some of the electron from the valence band they can come to the conduction band so it will give you electron hole uh, similarly you can also increase the temperature if you increase temperature that means uh, at t equal to 0 the valence band is filled whereas the conduction band is empty so it will behave like an insulator a semiconductor is an like a insulator at t equal to 0 however if we uh, increase temperature then there will be thermal excitation and due to this thermal excitation some of the carrier will come to from valence band to the conduction band see uh, this uh, energy level is flat however this energy level is parabolic so this energy is based upon the approximation known as parabolic approximation so by uh, this parabolic approximation the energy which is equal to eg plus h cross k square by 2m that means this factor is based upon the parabolic approximation for example a electron present here in this uh, curvature if a electron present in in the conduction band suppose at this curvature what is the energy of that electron the energy is equal to 
the minimum of the conduction band is EC. This one is EC. So EC plus H cross A square by 2 MN. MN is the effective electron mass in the conduction band. Similarly, if a hole is present in the valence band, then the energy of the that hole is equal to the maxima of the valence band is EB, EB minus H cross square A square by 2 MP. That is the mass of the hole. So here, as the electron and <coughs> hole arises, and the uh, important parameter which decides about a, whether a material is a conductor or semiconductor, if it is semiconductor, whether it is P type or N type, is the formula. Code. The important factor is the formula. Code. See, in a conductor that is in metal, the both valence band and conduction band overlaps. However, if you see the pitch at the middle of lower end valence band, so this is at the center for an intrinsic semiconductor. If formula band is close to the valence band, we say it is P type. If it is close to conduction band, we say it is N type. So the formula band is a very important parameter besides the uh, material property. Uh, as I already mentioned, at 0k, now this valence band is completely filled, conduction band is completely filled. Now, they are separated with the energy of EG. So, if you increase temperature, then some of the carriers, that means the electron, will jump from valence band to the conduction band, and they left hole. So, it will get EHP. Electron hole pair. <coughs> so that hole, so this hole, uh, uh, this hole is not a particle or not an antiparticle. Particle. Hole is just a concept. That means, uh, then what is the definition of a hole? A hole is absence of an electron in an otherwise field valence band. Remember this word field. If the valence band is filled and some of the electron left, then they will create they will create a hole. So, like electron, the hole has also different physical parameters like mass, charge, energy, velocity, etc. And we can calculate these parameters by using the by using the uh, concept that is totality of electrons in the valence band. So that we will uh, now see uh, and we know what is the mass, charge, energy and velocity of holes. So see, uh, this is the valence band uh, in EK vector K. So as uh, we know, that means this one is completely filled as uh, the valence band is filled, so summation over k is equal to zero. As summation over k equal to zero, so we can say the k value of the hole is equal to that of negative of the electron in the valence band. And energy is a function of k, so energy of the hole is negative that of energy of electron. However, the velocity of hole and electron is the same, remember, in the valence band, that is important. In the valence band, the velocity of hole is equal to velocity of, velocity of electron. And this mass, the mass of hole is negative that of mass of electron. So the word negative mass is a very interesting one. How mass is negative? So see, uh, uh, so uh, this valence band is uh, completely filled. As it, it is completely filled, so the total conductive, uh, total current density is equal to zero. We, let us uh, that jth position electron left valence band. So if it will left valence band, now what is the current density? So current density is equal to total current density minus the current density due to that jth electron, which is equal to minus Q Vj. So, but we know the first term is equal to zero. Therefore, the current density of the left electron is equal to plus Qvj. What does it mean? 
that means this current density is the current density of a hole because electron left valence band so it became a hole what is the charge now the charge of hole is positive q that means initially the electron which was present at at z position having velocity vj now there is a hole with the charge positive having the velocity vj so velocity of electron and velocity of hole is remain same in the conduction band but the charge is different so as uh, i explained this thing similarly one can obtain the effective mass of the hole which is opposite to that of effective mass of the electron this one is very important because the negative mass what is that concept the pi mass is negative so as you know how you can know the mass this mass that can be determined from the uh, energy momentum relation that means the energy operator which is equal to the half mv square so if you uh, make it in terms of momentum that is p square by 2m p is the the momentum operator that is h cross a so if you put here p energy became h cross square k square by 2m so if you find the double derivative of this energy then d square e by dk square will be h cross square by m h cross e j uh, that is h by 2 pi so reduce planck's constant Uh, so here now 1 by m is m is mass is equal to 1 by h cross square d square e by dk square so see the mass of a particle in semiconductor is decided by which parameter which factor h cross is a constant quantity so mass is determined from d square e by dk square what is double derivative of this the single derivative this gives you the slope gives you the curvature so the curvature of the band that will gives you the idea about the mass see here in this uh, this curvature what about this now this is more curve as in this ek diagram this curve is more as curve is large so d square e by dk square is large therefore mass is less that means we say this mass is light mass therefore the if electron is present here then that electron has a light effective mass whereas now see this curvature it is a less curved as it is less curved so the d square e by dk square is less therefore the mass which is 1 by m therefore mass will be large that means the effective mass will be large so the if the electron is present here then that energy band with heavy effective mass that means the same electron present in the light conduction band but depending upon the curvature the mass will be change so uh, so uh, let's on effective mass uh, before uh, we go for effective mass let me uh, example suppose there is a water uh, there is a let uh, wood, wooden log so if there is a wooden log a big size wooden log and you want to change the position from one position to other position on land so ultimately you should apply a very heavy force then you can uh, change the position of the log on land now you put the same log on water same log on water now we can easily displace the log that means the material is uh, sorry the object is same the object is wooden log when you put on land and when you put on water now the property totally change so this one is the concept of effective mass that means in water there is a additional force known as the buoyancy force that force that force will reduce the that means if float the wooden log on water surface we can easily replace it same thing when we uh, take a electron let us take an electron inside a solid so the 
and you apply some external force. Therefore, the total force is equal to the external force, force from the external agency, plus there is an internal force, which is due to ions and electrons in the solid. And that force is equal to mass into acceleration. But this F internal is not so easy for calculation. That means it is not easy or it is very difficult to measure all the internal forces. As this one is difficult, therefore we say the F external is not MA, but F external is M star A. What is that M star? That is the effective mass. This effective mass of an electron that takes this mass is the what cause the total internal forces. So by combining this, we will get the effective mass. See how mass is negative. As you know from our previous uh, slide, the effective uh, the mass is equal to one by h cross square d square by dk square. So you know in conduction band, if we assume the parabolic approximation, now this curvature is positive because it is a uh, the offside, so d square e by dk square is greater than zero. Whereas in valence band, this curvature is downwards. So this curvature is negative, that is less than zero. So as a result, the effective mass square by d square e by dk square, due to this curvature, if the electron present in the conduction band, the effective mass is positive. However, if the electron present in the valence band, then that effective mass is negative. This is less than zero due to this curvature, d square e by dk square. Now, what about the mass of hole? As the mass of the electron is negative in the valence band, and from our discussion, we know the mass of hole is opposite to that of electron mass. So the hole mass in the valence band is positive, whereas the electron mass in the valence band is negative. So this is the concept of a negative mass. Now, another interesting fact, most of the students, they always know the hole is heavy and the electron is lighter. It is not always true. That depends upon the material. See, if you take a germanium, the electron mass is 0.55 m0, whereas the hole mass is 0.37 m0. So this hole mass is very lighter as compared to electron mass in case of germanium. Whereas this m0 is the free electron mass, that is 9.109 into 10 to the power minus 32 kg. Similarly, for silicon, the electron mass is 1.1 m0, whereas the whole mass is 0.56 m0. That means for germanium and silicon, the whole mass is lighter as compared to the electron mass. The whole is lighter as compared to electron mass. But in case of, this is the reason why in 2000, after 2000 when uh, for your uh, MOS technology, 90 nanometer more, this strain technology is huge. Normally the silicon germanium is grown over silicon. This is, this is the reason why. And remember, if you see the research articles, they use the valence band offset, not the conduction band offset in strain, because the hole has the very lighter mass as compared to the electron mass. Similarly, in your gas, but in gas, the uh, electron is very, very light as compared to hole. See, hole has 0.48 m0, whereas the electron has an effective mass 0.067 m0. And this is the reason why in 19, uh, 1900, uh, that 1990 onwards, this gas is more popular. Due to its reduced mass, that is a very uh, uh, lighter mass, it will give you very high mobility. That mu equal to e tau by m star. As mobility is very high, so it will give you high conductivity. So that can be used for a high frequency operation. So the hemmed and mod fit, high electron mobility transistor and a modulation doped field effect transistor, mod fit, 
they use this gas and oil gas and they use the benefit they take the benefit of the lighter mass of the gas and they are used particularly for uh, satellite and mobile communications uh, in uh, due to this high frequency property okay so the other uh, parameters which we should uh, uh, know for uh, transport property is the carrier that if you are considering the a semiconductor you can get electron as well as hole so the electron concentration in a conduction band particularly electron is present in conduction band hole is present in valence band so the electron concentration you can find by integrating the product of density of states and fermi energy this fermi function that for density of states gives you the how many number of states are available but only available there are states available is not important important is the probability of occupancy that will given by the fermi function so if you multiply it because the conduction band the minimum of the conduction band is ec and we don't know what is the maximum value of energy in conduction band so let it be infinity so if you integrate from ec to infinity we get this will be nc e to the power minus ec minus ef by kt so here this nc is reduced to effective mass that depends upon the effective uh, sorry reduced uh, density this nc so at the conduction edge conduction band edge so here <coughs> effective density of states at the conduction edge and this nc depends upon temperature as well as the effective mass and here the second parameter it depends upon do doping you know we can modulate the fermi energy by doping if you increase doping then ec minus ef gradually decreases if this factor decreases this total will be increased that means carrier concentration increases so this n depends upon the how many number of electron that depends upon this effective mass temperature as well as it depends upon the doping concentration if you increase doping concentration automatically the carrier concentration increases same thing for hole but here the integration limit is the maxima of the valence band is ev and we don't know minimum because the energy in the lower it is uh, extend up to infinity so the limit is minus infinity db to integrate you will get the number of holes so this expression is valid for both uh, your uh, intrinsic as well as uh, extrinsic semiconductor uh, where you see you can increase the conductivity by increasing with temperature with doping as well as with changing the effective mass so and this is the fermi energy level uh, expression for this so for uh, the carrier transport phenomena as you know uh, if you take a crystal inside the crystal there are uh, 10 to the power let you dope there are 10 to the power 18 number of uh, electrons are there for uh, cubic centimeter uh, sorry cubic uh, Volume that is EMQ. So now this motion of carriers in the material is usually random. As it is usually random, the net displacement sorry, the net displacement is zero. Remember, if you only take a single electron, if you take a single electron inside the crystal, that electron velocity is of, of the order of 10 to the power 7 meter. Per second, sorry, 10 to the 7 centimeter per second. This is the velocity of an electron inside a crystal. That means if the electron is moving with very fast inside the crystal, as the number of electron in a crystal is very large, moving in this direction, ultimately there must be another electron which will be in the opposite direction. So the net displacement is zero. As the net displacement is zero. If you are not apply any external field, then the conductivity J, current density is equal to zero. But we can get the current if we apply external stimulus. That may be in the form of electric field or light 
or a magnetic field. So when you apply an external electric field, depending upon the field direction, this carrier motion will be a, uh, will be in a proper direction, and that leads to uh, the current. So that conductivity, which will, so that means we can get this current either by applying electric field or by applying temperature or due to the difference in doping concentration. That means carrier concentration, carrier concentration gradient. So there are different way through which we can get current from a crystal, from a semiconductor material. So that current, the current density, which is any V, V is the drift velocity that is equal to sigma into E, the conductivity. And that sigma, which is any mu E plus P e mu H, mu, this one is very important one, that is the mobility. So which is equal to velocity divided by the applied electric field. So mu equal to V by E, or it is E tau by M. This tau is the scattering time. That means when an electron is moving inside a crystal, so when it strike another electron, so before that, what is the average scattering time? That time is the tau. So this scattering phenomena is very important for this uh, for uh, determination of mobility or conductivity. Uh, that uh, we will discuss in details regarding this scattering and their uh, associated mobility in the last session on 18th uh, June. So this mobility, uh, which is an important parameter, because if mobility is more, uh, then uh, the conductivity that will be more. So in actual material, there are always some impurities in the material, defects, etc., that can cause scattering of the electrons. And similarly, if you are operating the material at room temperature, then at room temperature, the lattice in the uh, material, in the semiconductor, the lattice will vibrate. That means there will be lattice scattering. That is by collision between electrons and phonons. This phonon scattering that will limit the mobility. Remember, the phonon scattering will be dominate at high temperature. But if you are operating the device at low temperature, then different other impurity like a uh, ionized impurity, alloy degenerate scattering, interface roughness, they will contribute for that uh, will decide the mobility. Uh, another fact which we should know for uh, to know about the device, semiconductor device is band gap. Because uh, this EK diagram, uh, energy versus wave vector, K is wave vector in the K space is important one. See, uh, this is for a gallium arsenide. Here, in the conduction band, there are different values. So, this value, if you see, the gamma value is very narrow. So, the curvature is large. Whereas, the L value is wider. So, the curvature is less. So, now, similarly, in case of the valence band, uh, uh, there, uh, the valence band will split. There is splitting. This upper one, see this upper one, is more wider. As this curvature is wider, so d square e by d, d square e by uh, dk square is small because the curvature is wider, so uh, the double derivative of energy with respect to k is less. As d square e by dk square is less, so the mass is large. That means the hole which is present in this curvature is known as the heavy hole. Whereas this is more curved. As it is more curved, so d square e by dk square is very large. So the effective mass 1 by m, so that effective mass will be small. Therefore, the hole present here has the mass very small, that is called light holes. And also there is another splitting of this the valence band of uh, energy gap PSO, that is the energy of splitting of band PSO. So here, if the minima of the conduction band 
and a maxima of the valence band will lie at the same k. You can see uh, this the this minimum and this maximum they lie at same k. That is like k equal to zero. So we say it is a direct band gap material. Whereas if uh, for example this is gallium arsenide, if we see for silicon support, now this is the maxima of valence band, minima of conduction band. And now this the k value for this minima and maxima is different. As the k value is different, so this type of band gap is called indirect band gap. Always we take direct band gap material for optoelectronic devices because when there will be transition, it will give you photon. But if in indirect band gap there is there will be transition, it will give you Phonon. So uh, that means first that electron may jump to this position having phonon of energy EPH, then it can jump to the maxima of valence band, or there may be multiple paths. So uh, depending upon this, uh, the transport property will be decided. So this then there are no energy bands. Then how this carrier electron will come to this position or this position? This is known as the trapping, trap. If you, in terms of dope, if you create the traps, that electron will come to that trap and then it can come to, then jump to this lower energy levels. So by using this uh, curvature, the, uh, uh, general uh, device, you know, is the PD transport electron device, that is the gun diode, which has made by using the basic concept of this curvature. See, when an electron is initially in the gamma valley, it is more for so effective mass is less. As effective mass is less, so conductivity or drift velocity is high. So now, initially, when you are increasing the electric field, the drift velocity gradually increases. So when it attains a specific value, a large value, then what will happen? The electron present in the gamma valley, they can jump to the L valley. And now the L valley is more power. As it is more power, the effective mass is very large. That means the same electron, which is just shifted to another location, now its mass is different. It be here, so automatically the velocity decreases. So there is a reduction in the velocity. And we use this property and made gun diode, which is one important uh, device for microwave generation. So this is called a two valley theory. And the, uh, so uh, because from this value to this value, as you are increasing the electric field, but the drift velocity or uh, electron drift velocity or uh, in terms of J conductivity, it will gradually decreases, that will give you negative resistance. So if the re resistance is negative, then it can use for the uh, to, uh, design an oscillator, oscillator. That will give you a micro frequency. So another uh, uh, concept for optical devices is uh, for uh, with the optical transition, which uh, this one is very important one. Uh, as already I told you, in case of direct band gap, there is direct transition and this recombination is called a radiative recombination. That means when an electron directly jump to the valency band, it will recombine with hole that will give you a electron hole pair that leads to photons. So the electron material and devices use this property like your laser, LED, etc. But right now, by using the silicon, which is indirect band gap, the silicon, there are a lot of research going on silicon photonics, but it is very uh, difficult tax, very difficult to uh, for the industry people because because of this indirect band gap material in silicon. But right now there are a lot of research going on silicon photonics. So here 
this is indirect band gap that gives rise to photon whereas in case of indirect band gap it will give you the phonons this mega that will give you phonon so a phonon will come into picture uh, like an example so you know simply uh, from the basic transition the band gap eg when an when a photon is generated that uh, photon will be uh, having energy x nu nu is the frequency if let an example band gap is 2 eb then you will make a calculation you find the lambda is in 6200 angstrom that is in the visible range uh, that means the color of the light which depends upon the new frequency h is constant frequency is dependent to band gap if you think in universe how many number of mad made semiconductor sorry how many number of artificial that is uh, uh, sorry uh, natural semiconductor there there are very limited natural semiconductors are there so if we want a uh, lot of applications oriented uh, devices that means we should uh, change the band gap that means artificially we should create or we should design the material that is the compound semiconductor material so there are some limitations if you take bulk semiconductor in optical devices choice of the optoelectronic materials is limited through band gap that means as the band gap is a, that means the, naturally there are limited semiconductor having this band gap so for lot for our day to day applications we should uh, make man made structure second one the mobility of the carriers is a bulk in a bulk semiconductor is restricted through scattering so instead of bulk we should consider the low dimensional structures and we can modulate the structure to get high conductivity or high mobility so that is the limitations we should overcome so the breakthrough that means hence there is a need for new semiconductor material that is known as the map map made semiconductors so the breakthrough is after if it itself goes through after this mb and mocbd when uh, this was uh, 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 that means uh, develop then we can go easily the man made structures and a variety of devices can be uh, prepared or designed so one solution is you make alloy alloy means what for example there is a binary compound semiconductor like gas aluminum arsenide indium arsenide having this gallium arsenide direct this aluminum arsenide indirect band gap so now by taking out of the two out of this uh, three binary compound semiconductor we can made a tertiary for example the aluminum gallium arsenide this algas you can uh, if you go the linear approximation you can find out what is the lattice constant and also you can find out the band gap that means simply you change x what is x x is alloy concentration l x simply you change alloy concentration you can change the band gap so now it is in our hand we can control it see how we can change so this is gas gallium arsenide this is gallium arsenide at gamma gamma point this is 1.43 this is l value which is 0.3 b higher so now we want to make uh, alum uh, aluminum gallium arsenide and we want to change the band gap so as x increases so now as x increases now the as per the previous mathematical expression the band gap changes that means initially it is 1.42 now with respect to x when x equal to c when x equal to 0 that means when there is no alloy it is only gallium arsenide gas that is band gap if you take 
aluminum arsenide aluminum 100 percent aluminum arsenide that is band gap is 2.16 that means the band gap of algas varies between 1.43 to 2.16 see here so initially the band gap is 1.43 now when you change x the band gap will come to 2.16 that is band gap of aluminum arsenide see so this is the beauty of by which we can change the energy band we can artificially that means we can make the material and we can modulate the energy band so another technology which is also helpful uh, that means uh, for device is the strain technology uh, strain is another parameter if you control it properly you can also control the device property see for example if you take a gas gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide they have uh, same lattice uh, parameter approximately same so no need of strain suppose you want to go silicon over germanium now they have different lattice constant so it will leads to strain see this one is the substrate this lattice constant a a0 now if a material is a having lattice constant a1 and if a1 is less than a0 and if you want to go this material a over the substrate you should expand this and so that the strain which develop across the interface is called tensile strain if a, a, there is a material b and if this material has a larger lattice constant as compared to the substrate and if you want to grow then the you should compress you should apply force external force externally and you compress the lattice and the strain developed across the junction across this interface is called compressive strain so there are tensile and compressive strain and sometimes this strain as as you are applying external force so due to strain the band structure changes as the band structure changes it can change the effective mass so that may increase the transport property so this is one technology strain technology which has already implemented from 2000 downwards for cmos uh, that is in the mos so you can also apply strain from both sides this is called biaxial tension that means you apply the tension and compression force along z axis and simultaneously apply this then such tension which develop here is called biaxial tension this uh, it is uh, uh, called uh, biaxial it has also improved the transport property so this uh, this this is called epitaxial epitax layer that means uh, this epitaxy refers to a type of crystal group in which new crystalline layers are formed with a well defined orientation with respect to the crystalline substrate so this new layer form are called epitaxial film or epitaxial layer so you can see here this is the relaxed silicon german silicon so the silicon which has the uh, the silicon which has a low lattice, a less lattice constant small lattice constant so here you should apply the tensile strain now the strain sensor the tensor this is called tensor t e n s e r tensor the ten the strain tensor develop across this interface is equal to lattice constant of si g minus a of si by a of si now question arises up to how much length you can grow because the lower one is a higher lattice constant the upper one is a lower lattice constant due to strain you can grow no problem how much height you can grow there are some mathematical uh, formulations through experimental evidence and that the maximum height you can grow 
is called the critical height, critical thickness, H. So uh, this is the strain technology. You can use this strain to the device property. So then come to the quantum semiconductor structures. As I already told, when any of the dimensions of the structure are of the width of order of the Berkeley wavelength, then the carriers exhibit quantum phenomena along that direction. So that, that part is important. That means any of the dimensions of the structure should be large as compared to that of the Berkeley wavelength. So basically, in quantum mechanics, there are two basic phenomena occurs. One is quantum size effect, another one is tonality. I explain quantum size effect means suppose in, in a bulb, in a bulb semiconductor, now you through uh, uh, MV technique, now you uh, 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 that means the carrier which present inside this oil, now you confine this. That means the carrier cannot move along the direction. See, only for a reference, this dimension is looks like a very large, but actually this dimension is a maybe 10 or 20 angstrom, the width. As the width is only 10 and 20 angstrom, so electron cannot move in this direction, z direction. They can only move in x, y direction. That is a per perpendicular to the interface. So due to this quantum size effect, now the energy level will discretize. Similarly, the other phenomena which is huge in the tunneling. This is the, the basic principle, as all of you know. If you take a classical physics, yeah, if you strike a ball, that ball can return. That means if the wall is of very large height, the getting ball in the opposite side of the wall is zero, as for classical physics. So, Advantage is the basic thing of the south of the But it's the... Uh, uh, sir, uh, is there any problem? Any or... Yeah, 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 continue. Please continue. Okay, thank you. So now, so as for the classical physics, if we uh, strike a ball to that barrier, then getting the ball in the opposite side of the barrier is zero. However, in terms of quantum mechanics, if the barrier is very thin in the order of angstrom and you are imparting an energy into the barrier, then there is a chance some of the energy that can penetrate the barrier and you can get the energy in the opposite side of this. This phenomena is called the tunnel. So these two phenomena are the basics uh, of in quantum mechanics. And uh, today, the rest of the uh, this uh, uh, discuss about this quantum size effect and tunneling and its application in devices. See, this quantization, we are all uh, uh, acquainted with the MOS structure, which is at the silicon silicon dioxide interface. So, due to this quantization, there is accumulation of minority electrons and uh, the behavior of this electron will be two dimensional here, two dg. So uh, we use in CMOS, uh, uh, this, uh, this is due to quantum size effect. And here we treat the electron is moving only along the interface, along this interface. So similarly, if you go for the quantum structure, the uh, basic how can grow. Simply you take the grow a algas, then you grow a gas material, then you go grow aluminum aluminum cyanide having 2.16 for 30%. The aluminum cyanide is low band gap, and again, aluminum aluminum cyanide is a high band gap. So, in the aluminum cyanide, it will behave like a it will behave like a oil. So the electron that confined in the narrow gallium arsenide layer and it behave as a particle in a quantum oil along the both direction z. So 
that means this direction will be confined and it can move only along the x y direction so the behavior of the electron present in this well is like a gas particle so this one is called two dimensional electron gas and due to this confinement effect the electron energy will be discretized so this is the quantum size effect so you can see this is a single quantum well due to quantum confinement effect discretization of energy now if you add another well there is a gallium arsenide then aluminum gallium arsenide then gas so when you take two different quantum well and which are separated by a barrier very thin barrier then the other effect which you add here is the coupling effect so due to this confinement effect and coupling effect the energy will be split see here in a single quantum well this is the lowest energy e0 now when you make a coupled quantum well that single energy will be split into two energy with very little gap and this property is used in device applications uh, very uh, prominently uh, for a uh, hemp and morphed structures so you see as already i told in a couple quantum wells uh, if we consider two isolated uh, quantum wells there are uh, the uh, energy levels uh, sorry this wave functions wave function is nothing but the distribution of carriers that means the electron is distributed in this manner this is the meaning wave function gives you idea about the distribution of carriers so now when you make a coupled quantum well that means they are uh, separated with a very narrow band gap now this single energy level of individual well that will split into splitting there is splitting of energy so it will be split off and due to that splitting of energy you will get a symmetric wave function another an asymmetric wave function so this is uh, this is the beauty of a coupled quantum well structure and uh, by using this coupled quantum well structure you can design a you can also get a, a negative resistance through the property of resonance i will explain about this in one of our paper in the last class uh, we can also tune this uh, now we can also design uh, mqw and super lattices by using this quantum well if you take lot of um, any number of uh, wells separated by barriers but if they are separated with a very large gap see the barrier root is very large if the barrier root is very large the electron present in this quantum well in each quantum well will be behave like a individual identity there is no overlapping of energy level so there is no overlapping of energy level and this uh, multiple quantum well is used uh, for lasing technology also i will uh, say in uh, i will show you in applications and if now you simply reduce the width of the barrier if the barrier is very thin you can see now the barrier is thin as compared to well so if the barrier is thin now there is continuous overlapping the wave, the wave function the electron present in first well electron present in second well electron present in third well they would be overlap consecutively as the electrons wave function overlap they are will be splitting so here in like a multiple quantum well where there are discrete energy levels now these energy levels due to coupling effect they will be split instead of a single line it will give a another band known as the mini band so due to this phenomena tunneling and splitting uh, uh, coupling the in a super lattice we can get mini bands and these mini bands modulated the optical properties very efficiently in in qcl quantum cascade laser the property of this mini band is huge which gives a very high efficient energy high efficient uh, laser property so the tunneling probability from oil to oil is essentially zero in case of multiple quantum well however 
in super lattice there will be tunneling so the super lattices where i already explained the barriers are very thin so that the wave function of adjacent coils overlaps strongly in super lattice however in electrons in super lattice they are delocalized because they can easily tunnel out the semiconductor material has a lattice which is period so to uh, from your uh, master uh, level uh, class you know when we take a crystal as you know so you know yeah, when you take a crystal that means inside a crystal so there are uh, atom uh, atoms as when the atoms are come close to each other so there is overlapping of energy level as you know the energy which is varies like this like this the energy levels so when the energy level the atoms come close their energy level overlap like this this energy level overlap so here if you take lot of atoms then what will happen by some approximation if you take some approximation this structure is looks like this that means first there is energy this so it will be look like this like a super lattice so if you solve this structure by using the kp model corning planning model energy relation energy uh, structure band energy structure in semiconductor okay so uh we use the concept of this in your laser like in your bulk semiconductor laser where if we apply some external field that is a vf then there is a transition the electron can jump from the conduction band to the valence band and it can over, it can form the electron hole pair and it will give you lagging so here in bulk semiconductor the conduction band and a valence band both the band they take part in the con for the lagging purpose but if you go for see uh, if you go for the quantum oil laser now due to the quantum uh, that means uh, due to the confinement effect there are lots of energy splitting as the energy splits so you can uh, easily tune that means if you see in a in a basic uh, bulk semiconductor there is transition only from this level the minimum of this to the maximum of this this which give rise to corner but here in case of uh, quantum oil by tuning this if you tune this part that means you can modulate the energy either you can get energy here or you can also tune energy like this so as you can tune your energy and depending upon your application there will be transition and that gives rise to the photon so so here the choice is more in case of your quantum oil lasers so in this uh, this lagging phenomena is known as the interband phenomena because the electron jump from conduction band to valence band so both the band they take part in the conduction process but right now so there is a carrier confinement uh, laser so here in quantum oil laser there is carrier confinement is larger energy is discretized and also density of states are peak at the band edge that gives rise to population inversion make it easier so also the active the in uh, is very small in uh, some kind of quantum oil laser as compared to the uh, box and conductor laser so the advancement of this this is one uh, in, uh, in neon gallium arsenide phosphate uh, with the gallium uh, and gallium arsenide that uh, interface that will give you the quantum oil uh, and the lagging light which falls at 808 nanometer so these are other material by using which the we can also make the uh laser basically this is uh, sorry this
this is in in gas india value universal and and gas all gas they are also used for qcl quantum cascade laser which is more efficient one as compared to this uh, discus laser the qcl that is a quantum cascade laser which gives need to fair infrared portion of electromagnetic spectrum uh, which was first uh, fabricated at bell lab by capasso group but capasso is the chief so this uh, uh, nowadays uh, this qcl has a lot of application in your industry uh, in uh, medical applications etc and unlike the previous one this qcl is a unipolar laser unipolar laser means instead of valence band and conduction band we can take only the conduction band we can get a lasing phenomena so this is called due to quicker subband transition in a repeated state of quantum wave structure we can get qcl so a single electron can cause emission of multiple photons that means the efficiency is quite large you can see here this is a conventional uh, quantum wave laser where electron make a transition from conduction band to valence band so this is called inter band transition from one band to other band so this is inter band or inter sub band but here in qcl quantum cascade laser this transition see this is only the conduction band the actual original uh, structure is this this is a uh, multiple quantum wave like this so now if you apply electric field so when you apply electric field then this uh, potential will bend because 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 the potential which is a uh, which will be given by this that v of z this will be equal to e into fz which depends upon the field how much field you apply into the z direction this direction so uh, devasi sir sir yes sir yes uh, actually if if i am writing anything on the ppt if i scroll to the next uh, ppt uh, slide is, is it visible or it is not visible i think it is not visible oh then it's okay okay so when you apply a field depending upon the uh, strength of the field and its direction growth direction position of z then your potential will be added this is the let this is a structure potential so with structure potential additional potential is added due to the field so as the charge is negative here so this will be tilt so there is a tilting so as there is a tilting now when there is a transition from this third level to second level that will give you the in the uh, visible range that means uh, the transition that will give you the lagging position okay now there uh, the when there is transition from second to first then the first one is radiative second one is non radiative now initially their energy is equal in the equal position at energy initially but as you apply field the potential tilts in addition to the potential the energy levels also changes so you see now the first energy level e0 is match with e3 so that when you incident in your one single photon then it excited this then again it will give you a laser then again that will excite it to next oil then it will give another laser lasing then it will give another lasing that means a single electron can excite multiple number of photons which improves the efficiency a lot so that is the beauty of qcl whereas in case of your conventional semiconductor laser if you are imparting energy by single electron single photon we can get a single photon that 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 uh, so the efficiency is very less in case of your normal quantum wave laser so here that uh, there are different technique by using uh, we can get this qcl 
there is minimum production like here or uh, while uh, that is one year stack hopping hopping and sequence cell turning only in this third case three case so by different technique the qcl uh, is uh, characterized so for uh, qcl there is a we use a specifically mqw multiple quantum structure that discretizes the energy subbands so there is there will be population inversion between two subbands which is achieved by suitably designing the layers so interesting fact is that we can uh, modulate the lasing light simply by changing the oil width and barrier width which is in our hand that means artificially uh, uh, we can control this uh, layer thickness which is in our hand through so growth process we can control this and when you control this your lasing property will change so by changing the layer thickness the laser frequency can be tuned once an electron undergoes intersubband transition and it leaves a photon it can tunnel into next oil and create another photon so there may be superlattice mini bands and electron tunneling under light operation and it is the efficiency is quite high as compared to that of a uh, simple uh, quantum wave structure so the second phenomena is uh, i covered the uh, confinement effect second one is tunneling as all of you know for tunneling isaki leo isaki he got nobel prize in 1973 so by using this uh, tunneling concept uh, we also generate the negative resistance that can use for uh, microwave operation so a basic uh, as a classroom uh, uh, mode uh, in a tunnel layer when we uh, take a semiconductor material which is degenerate heavy doping so if it is heavy doping then there will be band bending so due to this bending this uh, upper band which is the conduction band is filled and this the the conduction band of the uh, other material that goes down so there will be tunneling and through tunneling we can get uh, uh, current so by applying suitable potential and the doping concentration you can uh, get a negative resistance that is in the tunnel diode so this phenomena that means uh, in uh, this resonant tunneling device by using the both tunneling concept and quantum wave concept, the resonant tunnel device which was uh, made uh, by chan isaki and su in 1974 it used both the uh, uh, property that means the tunneling property as well as the localized quantum confinement property that means when you take two barrier separated by oil that means the confined through a oil then when you are incidenting any photon uh, not photon you are incidenting any energy so that energy can tunnel this uh, barrier and when this energy will be match with the energy of the quantum oil then you will get the maximum peak in the current density i will show just now so that such tunneling structures can be constructed by controlling uh, by controlled layer by layer growth and applications we use it for mean mid infrared emitters and as a high frequency oscillators you see a, this is a simple arcade structure that can generate up to frequency 420 gigahertz uh, so here uh when you apply electric field that is a v when you apply v now, now initially this quantum this energy level is at this position so the incident energy from the left side is at low energy level so there is a mismatch in energy level so there is no transmission that means you will not get any transmission so current is minimum now you apply field when you apply field as per the concept the potential will tilt as the potential tilts that energy level also changes as the energy level changes so there is a there is a time at which the incident electron energy match with that of the energy of the quantum oil discretize energy and once this energy match this one is called the resonance there will be resonance and at resonance you can get maximum current at the 
outset of the second barrier which gives maximum peak current see this one see here that uh, in case of a in case of a now this energy is at the top level top uh, and whereas this energy is but in the lower half so as a result the incident photon energy sorry incident uh, electron energy cannot penetrate this so you will get low current now you apply field you apply the voltage a situation arises where this incident energy will match with the energy of that quantum wave and when it will match maximum incident energy will be uh, uh, appear at the out uh, uh, second uh, barrier so so that you can get a maximum current the b position is the maximum current similarly again if you increase the field if you again further increase the field that again takes down that the energy will again further moves down so now there is mismatch in energy so again that current will decreases so this region between b to c can be used to obtain negative resistance which is used to obtain the high frequency operations that means as for oscillators oscillators so uh, <coughs> this structure that exhibits a negative resistance and the current flows through the structure and resonance occurs when the electron coincide in energy with the quantum state of the wave so recently we have uh, as all of you know there is a lot of uh, interest on a graphene that means we can modulate the graphene property uh, there you can use both the quantum size effect that is confinement effect as well as the tunneling effect so there is a uh, some uh, uh, recently uh, this work uh, the new work with collaboration uh, this uh, madhusudan misra and nr das from kolkata university with the professor p sau from nist so here you can play with the atom carbon atom in graphene so suitably you can design the uh, uh, carbon atoms and you solve it by using green's theorem so uh, that means uh, see in terms of a, this is the layer structure schematic of a uh, armchair sorry armchair graphene nanoribbon uh, so here this one is looks like a oil in graphene but in reality in terms of potential it will actually a barrier this is looks like a barrier but it is actually oil so now if we can change this oil thickness then the current that that means in principle if the oil is less then obviously there will be more uh, tunneling we will get more current so for this case see when the oil is uh, this 19.80 times from this red one that means as the oil increases the current density gradually the current gradually decreases and this is uh, uh, sure that means this result is verified through the transmission coefficient versus energy so in case of lower oil the transmission occurs at a higher value of energy this uh, this uh, red one uh, red one so uh, uh, that means there are lot of scope you can also uh, uh, work on this graphene for this uh, rtd structure that is regional tunneling diode structure so this is uh, how from basics to the basic quantum structure like uh, quantum a uh, uh, confinement effect then tunneling and by using this we can uh, made some uh, uh, recent uh, devices that can be used in our day to day life so just a recap uh, we start with the nanotechnology terminology we proceed with the band and bond picture then concept of hole effective mass carrier concentration then we also discuss regarding some transport property where we basically discuss the mobility its limitation then the effect of strain the quantum size effect tunneling their applications uh, and finally we give a result on the graphene 
edge in a tv structure so thank you thank you this is all about so thank you dr sahu for your nice talk as well as uh, on time you have finished on time that is one of the major thing because uh, like me i am not able to finish in on time usually so thank you dr sahu the session is open for the question answer so okay, if you guys you. have any question please uh, ask to dr sahu i have also shared the feedback link as well as the test link in your chat box please fill up the both the link, uh, both the forms and in the meantime you can ask the question to dr sahu So I'll be happy if I will get some questions because yes, definitely, definitely, question is very important. Yes. Yeah, Devanjan, I think ask want to ask. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Mandal, it was a very nice presentation and very basic things you have what what we have studied in our basic classes. So in undergraduate classes, one second, it's very nice and from the very beginning you have to I have mean, taught us the. Uh, armchair agnr graphene that is a very good thing is a kind of research is going on lots of research are going on so i have some uh, course i have some queries uh, can you please go to the uh, slide number 24 please oh, yes yes okay oh, this one yes yes so uh, you have uh, written two different kind of crystal structure in case of direct band gap semiconductor in left side it it is uh, 100 and right side it was 111 so can you please explain this uh, i didn't understand why this there are two different kind of crystal structures are there uh, actually uh, this is uh, yes that's right. 100 yeah. and 111 It is basically wave vector versus energy plot. So why yes. there is there two different crystal structures are mentioned? Uh, it is actually a very good question, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I think I I will not uh, I am not uh, sure about this. Uh, okay, so, just. Uh, Uh, anyway, I I'm not sure also. I think he can think if he is not sure. Maybe, yeah, yeah, he will be available tomorrow. He can take yeah, this yeah. question tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and that's a very good question. I also I am also not aware about this thing. I want to know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am also now after after hearing this uh, yes, yes, question. Very, yes, very interesting. So, if any participant yeah. can answer, please answer also. That is a very. This is very interesting one actually. I have not marked. Thank you, thank you very much uh, for the. Yeah, it's a very good, good question, good observation, yeah, definitely. Good observation. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so I think any, any participant I, can. Yeah, they want just to meet. Any participant no, 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 can no, no, able no. to answer these things. If any participant can know, or he or she can answer also. But it's the. I think this is very basic things. I think, but yeah. we forgot actually. Yeah, they want just to see if you ask. Okay, just uh, another question I have in case of tunnel diode. I want to understand some uh, basic things. What is the brill zone for the tunnel diode? Uh, actually, the last one. I, is it possible? So I want to understand what is the first. I mean, what is the brill zone zone? First brill zone zone for the tunnel diode. Because okay. as as by as I know uh, from my if I recall that. As, okay. So so the uh, uh, That side is okay. That side is that slide is good for no 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 that that specific slide that twenty four slide number twenty four. Yes yes. Actually, if we go for the first billion gem. Yes yes. So, is there anything I want to understand that uh, is there anything different? Uh, for in case of brillian zone, in case of tunnel diode or normal diode, as you told that if I increase the electric field, the electron will uh, jump from uh, gamma valley to the L valley. Yes. So, so that's why you want to understand: is there anything? So, in in case of normal diode, it is not happen. So, it is simply it it will just up, up I mean, it will jump towards higher energy level at the gamma valley, not it will jump to the L valley. So that's why I want. I am a little bit curious about that. Is there anything uh, different uh, building zone that happens in case of uh, tunnel diode 
than that of the um, normal diode is uh, also it is not a uh, diode is a kind of junction but uh, the material will actually uh, gives us the um, opportunity to make that kind of device so is there anything difference uh, in uh, case of uh, i mean in there is there anything difference for building zone in case of tunnel diode or normal diode uh actually the first billion zone which is uh, normally extended from minus pi by k to plus yes, pi by so right, that yes. uh, within that range so yeah. in principle actually uh, i am not sure but uh, as, uh, as for my knowledge it does not depend upon that it depends upon the material uh, sorry it depends upon billion zone because as the uh, that valley that means as the valley changes it means the brilliant zone itself changes so so as uh, the brilliant zone changes depending upon that uh, whether the valley is uh, more or or so, uh, so it will be depend upon that brilliant zone okay okay fine so uh, just can i ask you last question yes 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 okay. just can you please go to the quantization of the mos i mean the whatever you have Uh, so in case of mos structure the metal oxide structure yes 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 this one this one please. so for, uh, i think uh, there is a kind of uh, source and drain because when you are say, uh, showing some interface silicon silicon interface i think uh, is there anything so you have you have told that this is a quantization so yes. quantization is it quantization or pinning Uh, uh, that is, uh, as you, as, you, as i can understand from this picture the fermi level is pinned uh, i mean after when you, this is a kind of mos structure mos uh, field effect transistor structure although there is no such source, source and drain is defined in your schematic but as i can understand this is a kind of fermi level pin accumulation is there so how can i mean can you please uh, i can't uh, understand that how can this accumulation can be uh, related with the uh, quantum uh, confinement uh, yes so actually uh, as uh, you notice it's uh, right uh, that there as it is a mos structure there will be source and drain but uh, my uh, actually my idea is to only show the quantization effect that means uh, at the interface so that's why i consider only this uh, gate then the psio2 then the channel okay. so so uh, that means when we uh, so initially uh, this p type so this channel is also p type initially but when we apply the gate voltage here so due to the gate voltage that means the metal oxide uh, that means uh, due to the heterostructure phenomena heterostructure property so that means uh, uh, this uh, conduction band along with uh, depend, uh, due to the difference in uh, that uh, high work function difference of that of metal uh, sio2 as well as that of the semiconductor so exactly. so that they will be, yeah so, so that uh, energy will be banned so uh, that my proposition is that so when the energy will be banned that means this at this interface now mm -hmm. at this interface so uh, this electron that means now along the if we say this is uh, x axis this is exactly. x axis now along yes. the x axis is it totally confined as it is totally confined so that electron cannot penetrate or cannot move along this direction it can move only along the surface this surface mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so uh, my purpose is to say uh, this one like uh, hemp or morphate that we show that in hemp or morphate that uh, when we take a high band gap and uh, the carrier confined in a low band gap material and they, there will be v shape uh, v shape potential see across this interface oh. so this is just my uh, oh, sorry to disturb you one second just just i want to just discuss with you don't yeah. take me otherwise please so just thing is that one fine con i mean this is the happening when you are applying some electric field isn't yeah. it 
Yes. So that means I think the quantum confinement, all these things we are under what we have understand understood is that that is due to the band bending. When you are yeah, yeah. no apply electric field, already there is a quantum oil is generated, there is a electrons are there, the two D two D G all these things we have understand when we are not applying any electric. But this yes. here in this particular structure, if you see the, the, the whatever the, the actually the, this is called the inversion, the inversion of the surface, the inversion yes. of the surface by the magnetic areas occurs due to the due to the application of the electric field. So yeah. how can you explain this as a quantum confinement? Then? Because uh, the quantum effect is due to the, as I told you, there is the within the de Broglie wavelength, the layer thickness, all these things, definitions are there. So this is due to the after the application of volt uh, electric. So that is my query: is that uh, how can I uh, explain this thing in a quantum confinement? Rather, uh, it can be inversion kind of. Uh, actually, you are right. Uh, what you uh, say, uh, actually, what you have said, uh, you are right. So my approach is to say that that when if we make this channel that uh, as I told uh, recently they have uh, uh, the PSMC they have made a three nanometer uh, uh -huh. that uh, channel channel, channel. So, okay, node length so when uh, the dimensions will uh, come very back, that is in the uh, low dimensions that comes very reduce the dimensions then at the interface we can uh, test this uh, quantization phenomena. So just means uh, to accommodate the 2D EG concept, two-dimensional uh, concept, just I show in this uh, manner for this, that uh, due to quantization, that means uh, uh, due to this band bending, as the carriers which are uh, located at the interface, they are uh, not move along this X direction, they can move along this, uh, uh, that's uh, right. So that's uh, that's uh, that is the why I have shown. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you very much uh, for this uh, fruitful discussion. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Hello, sir. Hey. Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, this is Madhusudan Mishra. Uh, actually, as uh, the question was like, uh, after applying electric field, this effect uh, comes, this bending comes. But I think this is. Uh, a structural effect uh, when you bias it maybe you get something kind of bending or maybe carrier uh, concentration increases or maybe carrier accumulation changes but when you just make this device when you make this interface that time only you get this potential energy band bending and you get this v uh, uh, well kind of structure there so i think he mean that while saying quantization no, no, no. That that, that is the, no, no. That is, I think it is not right because uh, because when you make this structure, it whatever it is showing it is in the right in, right now in the in the slide. So that is after the electric field application. Yes, yes, yes. So this when you are making the, this structure, this when you are, can be there after biasing only. Otherwise, no, it cannot no. be. Otherwise, otherwise that will be the reverse case. Yes. That will be the reverse case. First the accumulation. Then, then that will be the depletion. Then this is the structure that is the minority carrier. This is called the inversion. So when you are making, so first you have to apply the surface potential, then the threshold voltage, and then you will, will at, achieve this kind of uh, confinement and the minority carrier at the interface. Okay, but I'm not talking about carriers only. I'm just talking about the, uh, you know, that, uh, B uh, you get band structure. Yeah, band band structure. structure. I'm not not talking about the carriers. Uh, I'm not talking about the presence of the carriers because it doesn't. If you do not have any carriers inside that, then you should even have the uh, energy uh, band diagram or energy levels. Oh no, no, actually, uh, whatever I think, I'm not sure also because this is discussion is going on. That's what I'm saying. Band bending can be uh, achieved uh, after biasing only. Without biasing, you cannot give a band will not be bent. Um, am I cutting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So this band bending, as as we know, whether it will be bent upside or uh, downwards, it depends exactly. on the, uh, which channel we are considering. That first of all. Second, the band bending will occur. That means, as Madhusudan uh, uh, told, 
that means even though we have not bias so due to mess, mismatch in the uh, word function and uh, yes, yes, affinity yes i mean that exactly metal that metal yes. and the semiconductor and oxide so initially there is band bending but uh, as you know the in case of a mos so it will uh, that means first the charge will be depleted then uh, it will uh, after we apply a vg greater than that of threshold then there will be accumulation accumulation of minority electrons uh, in the channel so here uh, as madhu told that means uh, as uh, uh, previous uh, discussion that means as there is accumulation means we are already applied a field electric field uh, gate voltage so that's why there is accumulation but before accumulation if we see only the cons uh, a structure a metal a oxide then semiconductor then there is also band bending so uh, that means uh, here accumulation of minority electron source means already we have applied the electric field in the gate okay anyway i i think uh, we can so a uh, little bit more because we are late also i request modusudan also please join to more i know he is also i, I think he is uh, uh, lab is i think on close i think right lab is yes. modusudan lab is close i think right yes sir yes okay then will you please join tomorrow uh, during at least during this talk we can discuss okay, and yes, in the meantime <laughs> we can talk with our tinar sir and maybe discuss more and tomorrow we will get a good discussion after the after his talk okay devajan also thank you please uh, we will i also follow thank some books also it's a very good point out and a very good discussion that is uh, i think we are all of us are learning now na? that's the yeah, yeah. stage tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. i i think it is such type of questions or yes definitely for, uh, that are clear our basics also and the, yeah, there are a yeah. lot of students are there they will clear also their basics so that's so very that's good a... i'm very much uh, happy for this one i hope all of the all you are very happy is there any other question please If you have any other question, please answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will be happy if uh, other participant will also ask some questions. Sir, so, good evening, sir. Yes. Sir. Good evening. Sir, uh, I am Anand Raj. So I just want to uh, uh, know about the cascading lasers, sir. Yes, yes. So, okay. Yeah, here, here uh, uh, there is an uh, uh, transition from conduction band to conduction band. Uh, so there is interband transition also takes place over there. And uh, what makes the uh, electron from the conduction band to come to the ground state in the second uh, and the consecutive uh, quantum wells? So uh, if, if somehow I just initiate the, uh, for example, I just have three quantum wells. Yes. So I somehow initiate the first quantum well to go for the transition from the conduction band over there, and uh, how it has been populated in the consecutive uh, conduction band so that uh, uh, it was going for transition. Ah, uh, yeah. So that good question. Actually, uh, I have just so so a, a schematic of this, but in a QCL. So after suppose there are three or four uh, um, uh, that uh, quantum wells. So after specific this, which is uh, that means there will be another uh, one. See, I have not given the uh, that schematic. That means uh, uh, for uh, sorry. That means uh, to make the population uh, population inversion. So there will be another wider well where there will be population inversion. Then it will be uh, the lagging will occur. Then further again, there will be another three or four quantum wells having equal width. Then it will be again ledge. Uh, that means the ledging will uh, uh, give. So there are uh, in this fashion. Not not only if you make only three or four this uh, quantum well, you can get the output here, the uh, uh, that uh, ledger output. For this, you should take another a wider well. So in the design process, there will be a wider well. Where there will be population inversion will take place. Okay, sir. thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. I think there are no more questions. So I like to thank uh, all the participants as well as speaker uh, Dr. Mondor and Dr. Sahu for his nice talk.
and i repeat once again feedback link as well as test link already share with uh, in the chat box please answer the uh, test questions as well as please give the feedback any question Hello, anyone yes yes please yes i have process i have already for uh, from a uh, fill up the feedback and i have also what uh, done the test uh, question paper Okay. So I have some queries. So as far as I know, the temperature increases, the resistivity of the semiconductor decreases. Is it right? Yes, 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 Miss Mandel. But my answer shows wrong. Another is, suppose M1 and M2 are effective masses of holes present in wider and narrower curvature. Wider curvature means the slope is low, so effective mass will be high. So M1 will be higher than M2. Yes, for wider. So, yes. but my for answer. Wide... Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Sir, my answer Any... shows wrong. And which uh, one? Hard... Uh, can you repeat once again? First one, your temperature one. That one we already, uh, I yes. already updated it. Yeah. Uh, second one. Which M1 one? and M2. Second, mm -hmm. after that, let M1 and M2 are the effective mass of the holes present in wider and narrower curvature. Wider curvature means slope is lower, that is M1 is higher. Narrower curvature means slope is higher, that is M2 is lower. So M1 will be greater than M2. I am is, is it M1 okay? Is greater than M2. So, but it shows wrong. Okay, okay. That is also uh, yeah. And the third one. In quantum cascade laser, so transitions occurs between intraband. So there is no function of intraband transition. So the performance only depend on the intraband transition rate. Is it right? Uh, that uh, that is inter. It is given interband or inter subband. What it has given? Intra intra subband. So the answer is intra subband. If you see the structure, you can see. You can see this is my uh, okay. Let me share. If you see, so there is a when transition from one subband to another subband in the conduction band. That means there are inter band and inter subband. That means if you take a suppose conduction band, so due to uh, that confinement, we can get multiple number of bands. This is called subband. Okay. So when there is a transition from one subband to another subband, then you can get the uh, that uh, QCL quantum gas okay. laser. So that is the. So uh, uh, is it uh, sorry, inter sorry, I'm sorry. That is in, that is inter subband because inter from one subband to another subband. So this one is called inter subband. The phenomena is the inter subband. Actually, I, I, I wrongly pronounced it. That why okay. my answer is wrong. So it oh, will, the correct okay. answer is inter subband transition. Yeah, inter the inter, is yeah inter subband transition rate. Okay, thank okay. you. So any other anyone else? Madhusudan wanted to say something. No, no, sir. I was just trying to clarify this uh, ambiguity between this uh, intra and inter. So it okay. started okay. down. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you, thank you. Please, please stay tomorrow. We will discuss uh, once again about these things, and that is a very good discussion. Okay, so with yes, this, I think, uh, I think we have to close today's session, and see you all tomorrow once again at uh, 9.30 a.m. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mondra, thank you. Dr. Shahu, for your once again. Thank you. Dr. Thank Shahu. you all uh, for your patience. Thank you, Devasi, sir. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you very much. See you okay. all tomorrow once again. Have a nice day. Okay. Good night. Thank you, sir.